You'll have lots of Holy Spirit moving today, so if the Spirit moves you to clap, feel free to clap. It's, it's okay. Welcome, and happy birthday. I hope you welcome your family with a greater happy birthday when you see them in the morning. Happy birthday! Yeah, if you ever want to know why we say happy birthday, it's Pentecost, my friends, and that's the birthday of the church. We'll have a little birthday party right up here in front with um, birthday games and just kind of a fun little celebration. So we welcome all of you here, but especially our guests in our midst. Please fill out a, uh, not a birthday card, <laughs> fill out a welcome card as the offering plate passes you by, um, please drop the card in the plate. We welcome all of you who join us via YouTube and television. We're glad you can worship with us also. At this time, I invite you to please stand as the people of God and let us join our voices in the black book on page number five. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, the creator of wind and rain, field and ocean, the bread of life coming down from above, the power at work within us and this world. Before God and in the company of our sisters and brothers, let us confess our sin. Let's take a moment for silent confessions. God of glory and God of peace, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed. We have thought better of ourselves than others. We have told lies, said hurtful things, acted in ways we wish we could take back, and looked the other way when action was needed. In your mercy, O oh God, forgive us, cleanse us, and heal us. For the sake of Jesus, our Savior. Amen. If anyone is in Christ, there is a new creation. Everything old has passed away. Everything has become new. In Christ, you are a new creation. Your sins are taken away, and you are made new. Be kind to one another, tender-hearted, forgiving one another, as God in Christ has forgiven you. The peace of the Lord be with you always. God's people share God's peace. for number 124, 124 in your black book.
please join me for the prayer of the day, which is found in your celebrate insert. Mighty God, you breathe life into our bones, and your spirit brings truth to the world. Send us the spirit, transform us by your truth, and give us language to proclaim your gospel to Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Um, you may be seated, and we are going to receive the offering. And the offering song is Spirit of Gentleness, one of my favorite ones, number 396 in the Red Hymnal.
morning. This, the first reading this morning <clears throat> excuse me, is from Acts 2, verses 1 through 21. When the day of Pentecost had come, they were all together in one place. And suddenly from heaven there came a sound like the rush of a violent wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. Divided tongues as of fire appeared among them, and a tongue rested on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages as the Spirit gave them ability. Now there were devout Jews from every nation under heaven there in Jerusalem. And at this sound the crowd gathered and was bewildered because each one heard them speaking in their native language of each. Amazed and astonished, they asked, Are not all these who are speaking Galileans? And how is it that we hear each of us in our own native language? Parthians, Medes, Elamites, and residents of Mesopotamia, Judea and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt, and the parts of Libya belonging to Cyrene, and visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Crete and Arabs. In our own language, we hear them speaking about God's deeds of power. All were amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, what does this mean? That, uh, that the others then answered, sneered and said, they're filled with new wine. But Peter, standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed them. Men of Judea, all who live in Jerusalem, let this be known to you, and listen to what I say. Indeed, these are not drunk, as you suppose, for it is only nine o'clock in the morning. No, this is what is spoken, was spoken through the prophet Joel. In the last days it will be, God declares, that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. Even upon my slaves, both men and women, in these days I will pour out my spirit, and they shall prophesy. And I will show, port I will show portents on the heavens above, and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and smoky mist. The sun shall be turned to darkness and the moon to blood before the coming of the Lord's great and glorious day. Then everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. The word of the Lord. And we will have special music by our adult choir. Get your dance shoes on.
Thank you. The second reading this morning is from Romans chapter 8, verses 2 to 27. 22 to 27. We know that the whole creation has been groaning in labor pains until now, and not only the creation, but we ourselves who have the first fruits of the Spirit groan inwardly while we wait for adoption, the redemption of our bodies. For in hope we are saved. Now hope that is seen is not hope. For who hopes what is seen? Who hopes for what is seen? But if we hope for what we do not see, we hope for it with patience. Likewise, the Spirit helps us in our weaknesses, for we do not know how to pray as we ought. But that very Spirit intercedes with sighs too deep for words. And God, who searches the heart, knows what is in the mind of the Spirit, because the Spirit intercedes for for the saints, according to the will of God. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you. Please rise for the gospel reading. The gospel today is taken from John 15 and 16. I think it's helpful to um, uh, read the introduction. It is uh, before Jesus' Jesus' departure that he prepares his disciples, saying that um, I will go away, but don't worry, I will send the Holy Spirit to you, and uh, he will be your advocate, and he will be your guide. So that's the context of today's gospel. Jesus said, when the advocate, the Holy Spirit, comes, whom I will send, to you from the Father, the Spirit of truth, who comes from the Father, he will testify on my behalf. You also are to testify, because you have been with me from the beginning. I, Jesus, did not say these things to you from the beginning, because I was with you, but now I am going to him who sent me. Yet none of you asks me, where are you going? But because I have said these things to you, sorrow has filled your hearts. Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is to your advantage that I go away. For if I do not go away, the Advocate, the Holy Spirit, the Helper, will not come to you. But if I go, I will send him to you. And when he comes, he will prove the world wrong about sin and righteousness and judgment. About sin, because they do not believe in me. About righteousness, because I am going to the Father and you will see me no longer. About judgment, because the ruler of this world has been condemned. I still have many things to to say to you, but you cannot bear them now. When the Spirit of truth comes, he will guide you into all the truth. For he will not speak on his own, but will speak whatever he hears. And he will declare to you the things that are to come. He will glorify me because he will take what is mine and declared to you. All that the Father has is mine. For this reason I said that he will take what is mine and declare it to you. The Gospel of the Lord. You may be seated. Let's sing happy birthday to the church as the children are invited to come gather in the front. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear church. Happy birthday to you. Good morning, friends. What a beautiful day. I am so glad all of you are here to help us celebrate the birthday of the church. So why will we be celebrating the birthday of the church? Well, God 
Actually, that piece from the choir was very helpful. At the beginning, what did God do at the beginning? Way at the beginning, when there was nothing. What did he do? He created the heavens and the earth. And then he filled it with all sorts of living things. You and me. Then, at one point in history, we didn't listen. Anybody knows about that? Did you ever not listen? Yep, me too. I'm right there. So then God said, well, got to go to time out. We'll need to think about this, but I'll find a solution to the problem. And he did. Because he knew that we will continue to not listen. We might promise, but he knows that at one point we don't listen very well. So he gave us Jesus. And Jesus was born as a baby, just like we were born as babies. And then he grew up and he did many wonderful things. He taught, he played with people, he ate with people. He was just like you and I, with the one difference that his daddy was God. And so when the time came, we heard God's plan was that once Jesus dies, he dies for all of us at one point. And so that's what happened. People were sad, but God said, just watch out, I'm coming back. Three days later, he is risen. He is risen and he came back. He walked the earth and showed people that he is no longer dead, that he is alive, and so that they not need to worry. And so he walked with them for a certain amount of time and taught them and was with them and assured them that everything will be okay. It was God's way of giving us all a great big hug. Then Jesus came and said to his friends, now it's time that God wants me to come home. I've been with you, I love you, but I want to go home. And so the people said, but how, how do we know that we will be okay? And he says, well, I'm going to send you someone that will make things okay. And that is the gift of the Holy Spirit. You all have received that gift already when you were what? Baptized. There it is. When you were baptized, God gave his Holy Spirit into your heart, and that's where the Holy Spirit lives. That's where Jesus lives, in your heart. And he says, use it. Listen to it. Be with it. And that is what happened on Pentecost, the day we celebrate today, is the outpouring of the Holy Spirit into people's hearts. Now we want to know what the Holy Spirit does. Besides, what would a birthday party be without birthday games, right? All right. I need you to form one long line because we're going to come and figure out what the Holy Spirit does. I need the first person to stand here and then everybody else lines up right behind there. I'll be the first one. Actually, I'll be the last. I'll just make the front of the line for now. And you all get a turn, so don't worry about where you are in line. All right. You know what this is and how that works? You play hopscotch. Have you ever played hopscotch? All right, jump through the line, jump there, and then you go all the way back there so that the others can do it. There we go. Looking pretty good. You wanna do it with me? No, yes? Shall we do it together? There we go, woo! Yay, she flies right through there. Good job, friends, you're good. I love it. This is a great party. You going to jump with me? You're wise. You took your shoes off. This pastor always breaks an ankle when she does things like this. There we go. Good job. Well, how about I do it now? Can I do it? All right, you watch me. So what happens? Remember, I'm playing with the Holy Spirit. What am I doing? 
I'm picking up. What else happens? You're too orderly for me. Are you always playing orderly birthday games? Oh, your parents are strict. All right. What happens besides me picking up? What happens to the lines? The lines go away. All right. Go play hopscotch. There we go. He got it. He is full of the Holy Spirit. Just play it. You are just all too good of listeners. Okay. Did you not see what Pastor Dirk did? Well, there we go. Play. Hopscotch. There we go. Man, you have well-behaved kids. They're all Lutheran. Thank you so much for that. Isn't that fun? You get to make up your own rules? Look at that. Isn't that a joy to watch? I love it. And they don't have to sit still. Are you ready? Yay! Good job. I love it. You can just sit right down where you are. That is the gift of the Holy Spirit. This spirit today we heard blows where it wants. The Holy Spirit takes all the lines away. It makes it bigger, better picture with laughter and joy. And it lets us do things that we thought we were never able to do. Let me give you an example. Do you know our little fresco up there? Okay, well, I'll call it a fresco because otherwise I don't have a good choice word for it. So the fresco up there, when, when we learned what it will take to make that go away, you know what people said? You're never going to be able to do that. Because $1.5 million is a lot of money. So we heard many times I picked up the phone or went to the store or talked to people and they said, oh, that'll never happen. No, that'll never happen. That'll never work. And all I could say, because I really didn't know what will work and what won't work, was let's just trust the Holy Spirit. Let's have faith and trust. And you know what? God showed all of us what he can do. When we let him blow where he chooses to blow. When we let him go where he chooses to go. When we give him all the freedom and all we need to do is listen and trust. Because with all of your help and all of your help, that is going to go. It's going to move out. Not today, not tomorrow, but eventually it will. Because the spirit blew, the people heard, and you responded. That's what the power of the Holy Spirit is. It removes all the lines. It blows where it wants, when it wants. And so my prayer for you is that you always have the spirit in you because fear never wins when the Spirit moves. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the gift of the Holy Spirit, who will always empower us to be our best, who will always empower us to listen, who will always empower us to win over fear. May your Spirit blow in our hearts and this world fearlessly and fiercely. In Christ's name, amen. Thank you, my friends. That was great. And you are brave people. Not all of them would have played hopscotch without rules. Oh, Finger that change. jingle change. I keep forgetting about that. There we go. You know the, I mean, you know the works. I don't need to give any rules.
you for your generosity. And thank you for your well-behaved children. I really do enjoy them. God's grace and peace to you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. It's fair to say that Pentecost is a day when the disciples experienced a radical change or a radical transformation in their lives. It all started after the Holy Spirit came down to them in the form of the wind and in the form of the fire, touching them and enabled them to do things they, they did never before. And I don't know about you, but I think that uh, what happened last weekend is a great example when the Holy Spirit touches us and through, uh, moves through us, but I will come back to that later. In the context of Pentecost, I'd like to share with you a story about a man I encountered uh, last January at our senior pastor's retreat. As you may know, every year, the senior pastors of this synod come together for a retreat with a bishop um, for a time of continuing education, renewal, and Christian fellowship. The retreat takes place at an amazing resort, a resort which is famous for its incredible hospitality, wonderful food, and beautiful scenery. The last time we were there, we saw hundreds of deer, which is really amazing because there's a valley and you can... If you like the middle of nowhere, it's beautiful scenery. It's fantastic. I love them. Then you, I encountered a lot of pheasants, antelopes, and wild turkeys. If you like that kind of stuff, it's heaven, almost. Anyhow, the interesting part about that retreat is that while the actual cost for a retreat like this would be thousands of dollars per attending person, congregations, pastors, and the synod only pay a few hundred dollars for those three days a fraction of the price it would normally cost if you want to stay there. So the question is, why do we as the synod, as the senior pastors, pay so little? Well, I learned that we pay so little because the rest of the costs are all covered, all covered by the generous owners of that beautiful facility. So why would any business person in his right mind provide any service that would make him not money, but would make him lose money year after year? Well, the business owner would tell you it is his gift and his ministry to the pastors of the South Dakota ELCA Synod. It is his way to give back to God and God's people, especially for the development of leaders or leadership. But here is the interesting thing, for me at least, and that's why I mention it. It all started a few years ago, maybe 10 years ago, after that business owner suffered from a major heart attack. A heart attack, in accordance with the doctors, 
that should have killed him. I mean, the doctors didn't know any other case who would have survived something like this. It was in such a context when he was literally fighting for his life that our bishop, by coincidence, if you believe in coincidences, happened to be there. Uh, keep in mind that he is not an ELCA member, he's not a Lutheran. He happened to be there and he started to pray for him, to be with him in that critical time. And while the bishop kept praying for him, a miraculous healing within 24 hours took place. And again, those are not his words, those are the words of the doctors. Because they thought that they would have to do an incredible, dangerous surgery procedure. And so, because it happened on the weekend, they had to wait till Monday till everybody was together, the entire team was there. And on Monday, when they started the procedure, they realized there was nothing that they could track back. Um, they don't know how that happened. Usually, you know, you see some damage, right? Um, there was nothing that they could trace back. They couldn't explain what happened. Anyhow, a healing took place that left such an impression on that man that he came out of that experience like the disciples in today's gospel or the disciples in today's first lesson as a totally transformed and changed man. Ever since, he is known to be extremely generous and caring. Never mind that he wasn't like that at all prior to his heart attack. He was known as the grumpy old man. And that's an understatement. When you talk to his people who really knew him really well, his core employee, employees, he was a slave driver. Anyhow, dear friends, I mention it because there is often a mysterious moment in all of our lives. A moment when things start to change. A moment when belief comes alive. A moment when God touches us on a such deep level of our souls that we will never be the same. I don't know about you, but for me, one of those moments in the context of the life of this congregation happened last Sunday. You know, when people started to move forward and put their pledges into that offering basket, I don't know about you, but I could feel God moving through them. Thank you so much uh, for your generosity. It really, truly did exceed all of our expectations. Um, it's amazing. I don't know, Conchanza reminded me, I didn't mention that at the first <laughs> sermon. I don't know what any of you pledged, but I was interested in the dynamics of those pledges. And I learned that um, the pledges came in from all people. All people, young people, people of uh, great economic uh, resources and other people, probably, you know, we don't know that, but of probably meager resources. Um, the, the support was broad which is always a great, great sign. We have a lot of families, you no know, average young families, who stepped up to the challenge in incredible ways. We have children, which touched me the most, 
who filled out their own pledges. We have um, uh, confirmation students or high school students who filled out their own pledges. We have um, college students. Now, usually you would expect that college students are part of their family pledges. No, they decided to do their own pledges. So thank you so much. Again, I think that's only possible because God touched you. It's not because we are so great. It's nothing to do with us. It has something to do that God is working through people like you. And it's a really humbling experience because it remi reminds me that we as leaders and as a congregation at large have a huge responsibility to justify that trust. You know, we, sh we, sh we cannot afford to focus on things that don't matter. We should always remember every day to do what God calls us to do, right? To love God with all our heart, with all our strength, with all our mind, with all our soul, and to love one another and to love ourselves. That should be the guiding principle of everything that we do. In accordance with these um, lessons, the first disciples experienced that moment of change and transformation during Pentecost. And it still happens nowadays for many people who call themselves Christians. Um, it's, I find it really interesting when the Holy Spirit touches us, our vision starts to change. We may experience the world in a different way. You know, we may get a sense that our life, in our life there's a real sense of purpose and meaning. And so the powerful about the Holy Spirit is that he does enable us to do things we have never done before. I'm pretty sure, I, I know for sure, I didn't speak with people about that, but I, I remember my first time when I came to the United States and I had to do a pledge like this, it stretched me beyond my comfort zone. And then when I look at the numbers, and Chana will talk about it later, I am pretty sure that it stretched many among us among their comfort zone. Thank you. In that sense, I hope that you will always remember that God will dwell in all people. He is here, he is alive, and I hope that you will see this place as a, as a magical place that you will always experience God, God's love, and God's grace in all of us. May God dwell in you and in me forever and ever. Amen. Let us sing together number 34 in your black books, number 34.
filled with the Holy Spirit, we join with the church in every place, praying for the world that God so loves. Lord of life, you baptize your people with the fire of the Spirit. Grace your church everywhere with your visions and dreams, so that as we testify, all people will hear the gospel, the good news, and call up on your saving name. Hear us, O oh God. Your spirit swept over the waters and you created the human family. Now we are divided, scattered like dry bones. Connect the nations with the strength of the Holy Spirit so that all will live in hope. Hear us, O oh God. Your spirit sighs with every need. Guide us in honoring the dignity of everyone and opening our lives to others. Pour your healing mercies into the lives of all who need your care, especially those people we name in our hearts. Touch them with your presence and be with them forever. Hear us, O oh God. Your Spirit has called and gathered this congregation into life in Christ. Help us in our weakness. Teach us to pray. Search our hearts and intercede for us, your beloved saints, according to your will. Hear us, O oh God. Your Spirit touched many, many people in our congregation and moved them beyond their comfort zone with their pledges. I thank you for this. Help us to be grateful all the time for everything that you give us. And help us to be humbly in your presence. Hear us, O oh God. By the sure guidance of your Holy Spirit, O oh God, we lift up our prayers and trust and thanksgiving through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat, this is my body broken for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. The same after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sins. Do this for the remembrance of me. Let us now pray how Jesus taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. I invite you to be seated. I invite the celebration team, the communion assistants, and acolytes to come to receive the Lord.
for just a few announcements. Um, the first one is that the rummage sale is going to happen. If you still have items to bring, please bring them during the business hours. And uh, Lisa and Joan Moreger will be there. But please remember to not bring any electronics um, or outdated baby equipment, any of that order, because it's very difficult for us to sports equipment, any of that, it's just very difficult if they don't function for us to dispose of them. So thank you for keeping that in mind. Also, um, we will change our worship times. This is the last time we worship at two times during Sunday um, in the summer. We still keep our six o'clock every Saturday all throughout the summer, but Sunday mornings will change starting next week. And um, it's going to be celebration. I know there might be different prints around the first two Sundays of each month at 9.30 we worship traditional uh, using the traditional worship the third and the fourth Sunday we'll be worshiping with the celebration service if there should be a fifth Sunday it'll be traditional um, we will be going out to the lakes golf course again this summer only on the fourth Sunday of each month so on the fourth Sunday of June fourth Sunday of July and fourth Sunday of August you will find us at the lakes golf course at 11 o'clock, we will remain at 9.30 here in the sanctuary and then travel out there um, to worship out there at 11 o'clock. If you do have questions or are wondering, please feel free to call the church office. And now I'm going to have Jana. Yay! I'm ready. I'm all warmed up. I did this like three times, so I'm all ready. Stanz is my woohoo person, so here we go. Okay, so it's my great pleasure to announce to you how much we have brought in in gifts and pledges as of this morning. Drum roll! Oh. No. What? Okay, here we are. 950,452. Woohoo! There we go. Woohoo! Woohoo! And that also, that includes $500 that we got through the piggy bank. So as Pastor Dirk said, it's coming in from all ages, all ranges, everywhere. So thank you so much for that. Obviously, you saw the need, you listened to the story, and you rose to the challenge. So um, thank you, thank you so much. So what's next? Um, if you made a pledge, you'll be getting a letter from us letting, um, kind of to confirm that number that you put on your pledge card. So please look those over and let us know if we've made any mistakes or... If the spirit moves you to add an extra zero, we will not say no. So go ahead and do that. Um, we're sending out letters to those who were not in church so that they have the opportunity to give as well. I have pledge cards. There's pledge cards in the back. So please don't feel like you were left out if you didn't, weren't in church last Sunday. We'll be sure and take care of that. And then finally, there'll be some reports that you'll be getting on what we are doing with those gifts. So expect to hear from that. We'll be starting some construction here as soon as we can so that we'll let you know what's going on with that. So we want to be very transparent with what you're doing with your gifts. So once again, thank you. And here we go. Thanks. Um, Are you going to <laughs> you know, um, I cannot tell you how much um, Jana worked behind the scenes. Uh, she is a chair of that campaign. And um, every time when you see her or people who were involved, I see you nodding. There are so many people who worked behind the scenes. Please give them thanks. And also the same is for the building committee. You know, they did the prep work. They know what's going on here. There are so many people. So thank you so much. Thank you. Give them a hand. The sending song is One Spirit 25. Please rise. <laughs> 